The ability to read is a critical life skill required for everyday living. Those who are illiterate or have difficulty reading are seriously disadvantaged in our society. Unlike speaking, reading is an unnatural development and requires skills learnt in the first years of schooling. The ability to read relies on the understanding of a few key elements. Coordinated use of visual perception, language competencies, concepts about print, knowledge of the alphabetic code, contextual cues and metacognitive strategies. Reading difficulties occur when students are not able to understand each element of reading. There are three main groups of students who have reading difficulties. One group will have trouble with word decoding but can comprehend words through context in a sentence or paragraph. Another group might succeed to memorise sight words while they are unable to understand context or meaning. The final group of students may not be able to decode or comprehend words at all. The reading difficulties will become more prominent as a student progresses through school and will affect their ability across all areas of the curriculum if it is not addressed. While some students may have more serious problems, others will merely need explicit instruction to ensure they become proficient readers. Experts and researchers debate the best way to help students with reading difficulties. Two prominent arguments are nature versus nurture and the correct way to process print. The former argument debates whether students are born with an emotional or physical inability to comprehend the complexities of reading or whether a lack of phonological and syntax knowledge has caused reading difficulties. Studies show there is a link between reading difficulties and working memory. Students with low reading abilities had substantial deficits in complex span tasks. These difficulties affect up to 6% of the school population and have shown to affect the students throughout their schooling careers. The second common argument on the correct way to process print argues whether a top-down approach is sufficient to produce a proficient reader or if a bottom-up approach works best. The researchers concluded that neither is mutually exclusive. Both approaches should be used in unison to help readers understand the complexities behind learning to read. The Australian Curriculum and Melbourne Declaration on Educational Goals for Young Australians are very flexible and encourage rich and equitable environments for all students. The Australian Curriculum encourages teachers to make necessary adjustments to the way in which students with difficulties are taught and the means in which they demonstrate their learning. Similarly, the Melbourne Declaration has specific goals relating to students with difficulties and disabilities. Goal 1 states, Australian schooling promotes equity and excellence. This means all schools must provide all students with access to higher quality education that is free from discrimination, reduce the effect of other sources or disadvantage such as disability, homelessness, refugee status and remoteness, Promote a culture of excellence in all schools by supporting them to provide challenging and stimulating learning experiences and opportunities that enable all students to explore and build on their gifts and talents. Promote personalised learning that aims to fulfil the diverse capabilities of each young Australian. By incorporating these goals into our classrooms, we are ensuring students with reading difficulties are having their rights met. Although some teachers with the best intentions for their students can find it difficult to identify their students' problems and how to fix them. It is not always clear and usually requires heavy monitoring. Teachers should be aware of student engagement and confidence with decoding, fluency and comprehension skills. Students struggling in any of these areas often feel discouraged or frustrated and likely need more explicit instruction. For further testing, students should undergo the Word Identification Fluency Test, Early Reading Diagnostic Assessment. The test assesses multiple reading components including concepts of print, phonological and phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary and comprehension. The test will provide a more cohesive explanation of students' abilities and will provide the teacher with the necessary tools to cater to the specific needs of each child. But, in terms of classroom-based strategies to assist students with reading difficulties, an increasingly popular school-wide strategy called Response to Intervention is being introduced into schools. 
It is used for early intervention of students with reading difficulties and operates under a multi-tiered model which tracks student progress through formative and summative assessment. The model starts with Tier 1, Primary Intervention, which is evidence-based classroom reading instruction with universal screening to identify students at risk. Tier 2, Supplementary Intervention, is provided to small groups of students identified as at risk. And Tier 3, Tertiary Intervention, is one-on-one instruction and entails the provision of reading intervention of greater intensity. Tier 2 and 3 suggest the supplementary instruction is added, not replaced for regular class instruction, as it provides more opportunity for clear and explicit instruction. The RTI model greatly benefits students with reading difficulties, as the instruction is purposeful with key objectives defined. It caters to diverse needs and ensures the students are getting a range of easy and challenging activities. There is no one way to help students with reading difficulties to become more confident readers, but by incorporating some of these strategies and using explicit instruction, you can help students to understand and learn about the complexities of reading. Thank you for watching.